When it comes to the scanf, the first thing that you have to remember is all about the function called scan. A group of characters is what you will be calling it as a string. But I'm speaking about only one character. If I use a printf and within the double quotes, whatever I give, so that will be printed on your screen as it is. The number of values that you're reading should match with the number of addresses what you're specifying. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the very interesting chapter. It's going to be input and output operations. Guys, in this chapter, you will be learning how do I take the input and how do I give the output? So when I'm taking the input, what are the functions that I'm using? When I'm giving the output, what are the functions that I'm using? Is what I will be explaining in this chapter. Yes, without wasting much of your time, let me get into the session. So guys, in this session, mainly I will be focusing on input output statements and also I will discuss how do I read and write characters Along with that, you will also learn formatted and unformatted input output statements. So this is what the agenda for the day for all of you without wasting much of your time. So let me get into the content quickly. So guys, introduction. Yes, you all know that as I told you, if I want to read or if I want to take the input to the C programming or if I want to give you the output, I have to use some of the predefined functions. Predefined functions in the sense what I have already defined it. So I will be just using it. Then I will be using it right from where exactly you are getting that functions. So I have stored it in some place. So that place is what I will call it as a standard library. So guys, where you will get all the predefined functions with respect to the input and output operations. So that's what I will be discussing with all of you today. So let's start with the first one that I have. How do I read a character from the user is what the first topic that I will be discussing with all of you. If I want to read a single character from the user, sir, single character in the sense what? Say for example, I just have A. So this is a single character that I have. A group of characters is what you will be calling it as a string. But I'm speaking about only one character now. Then how do I read a character from the user? So for that, you need to remember I have to use one of the predefined function that is get care. You all know that in my previous classes also I have discussed about this. What is this? A beautiful parenthesis. So guys, parenthesis, wherever you are using the parenthesis, you should treat this as a function. Then how do I use this get care function? What is the right syntax to use the get care function is what you need to understand here. My dear students, so please listen to me carefully. Here I have the syntax for all of you. I have to write the variable name and after that I have to use the assignment operator followed by I have to use the function called get char. I have to call this function, right? So what happens? This function will help me to read the single character and then it will assign that character to the variable whatever you have taken. That's what you need to observe here. So let me show you the syntax. So in this line, what is that I'm trying to do? I'm creating a variable called name of type char. That's what you need to observe. Then followed by, I have the get char. I have the get char. So what is that I have in the get char? Get char is a function. So which will help me to read one single character. So it is helping me to read and whatever the content that you have read. So it is there already in this function and it is getting assigned that character or variable that is name. So this is how I will be reading one single character is what you need to remember. The same thing happens, but in a quite opposite way, if I want to display a character, that is going to be write a character. So for that, what are the function that I have to use? Let's check that. So guys, when it is uh, writing a character, I just have to use a function called put char. So there I was using the get char. Now here I will be using the put char. The syntax remains very simple. So you will be storing the character. So imagine I have the Y as a character, single character. I'm storing in the variable answer. I'm storing that in the variable answer is what you need to remember. So fine. Then followed by what does that I have to do? I have to pass this answer as a parameter to this function. So this will help me to write a character is what you need to remember. So fine, we understood reading a character and also we understood how do I write the character. So you just have to remember get char as well as put char. Moving forward to the next concept that I have formatted input. 
So guys, when it comes to the formatted input, it is very important that you need to remember a special important function that is going to be the scanf. What exactly this scanf is doing for all of us? This is going to be very, very important if you want to read any values from the user. Let me speak about this in detail. Let's start. I want all of you to please make a note of it. So guys, when it comes to the scanf, the first thing that you have to remember is all about the function called scanf. So do I call this as a function? Yes, of course, you have to call this as a function, right? So that is the first thing that you need to remember. Yes. When it comes to this, I will discuss this in a part wise. Let me mark this as a part one and let me mark this as a part two. What is that I have in the part one? Please observe, I have percentage 3D is what I have. So let me speak about this. So please observe this is a general format, percentage XD. X is replacing the value that is three, okay? So what is this percentage? What is this X and what is this D? Let's understand this in detail. So guys, percentage, please understand, percentage denotes the specifier of the conversion follows. What is the meaning of it? So let me discuss that in detail. So guys, whenever I want to read any value, okay, let's say imagine I'm reading the integer value. So what does that I have to do? So I have to write percentage D. D represents integer value. So that's what you need to remember. Suppose if I want to read the float value, so how do I write? So percentage F, F represents the float value. If I want to read the character, suppose I will be writing percentage C. If I want to read the string, so I will be writing percentage yes. So this is what you need to remember at this point of time. But sir, what exactly is X? We understood that D, percentage D, percentage F, percentage C, percentage yes, we understood that. What, what exactly this X is all about? My dear students, you need to understand that is the width of the column. So what is the width of the column to store the value what you are reading is what I'm specifying with the X. It's optional is what you need to remember, right? So X specifies the width of the column where exactly you're storing the values is what you need to remember. So fine, point number one, you understood. So now guys, please observe, I'm trying to read two values here. Sir, how did I get to know that I'm having two values here? Please understand percentage 3D, okay? So percentage 4D. So this is one value and this is another value. Whatever the value that I'm reading for this, okay? So that will get stored in this location. Sir, how do I know the location? So please observe, someone is a variable name and I'm not giving the variable, so I'm giving the address of this variable. So in this location, whatever the value that I'm reading, I will store it, is what you need to understand. After that, please observe, I have this second one. So what is that I'm second one having? I'm reading the value. The second value is what I'm trying to read, but where are you storing that? So please observe, I've given the address. To store the second value, I've given the address here. This is what you need to understand with respect to the first part and with respect to the second part. But you have to specify how many number of values. The number of values that you're reading should match with the number of addresses what you're specifying. That is most important, right? So this is how we will be reading the values is what you need to remember with respect to the scanf. So guys, the same way we have just given an example here, please observe how many values I'm reading. I'm valuing three values, right? So all the values of belongs to float and I'm storing that in this variables is what you need to remember, right? So in the same way, guys, please observe here. I have uh, one type for the first value that I'm using. The first value is of type character. The second value is of type string. But when it comes to string, so please observe, sir, you said ampersand in the sense that it will give you the address, but when it comes to string, you don't have to give the address. So that is what you need to remember. So this we will discuss in the strings chapter. When we discuss the concept of strings, we will discuss that in detail. But as of now, you just have to understand whenever we are reading the value of string, you don't have to specify the ampersand is what you need to remember. So this is an example just to show you how exactly we read the different values with respect to scanf is what you need to remember. So guys, now it comes to the printf. What is the use of printf? Printf is one of the function which will help me to print whatever I want. Okay, so that's what you need to observe here. So whatever I give within the double quotes, it will be printed as it is. So please understand that. 
If I use a printf and within the double quotes, whatever I give, so that will be printed on your screen as it is. That's what you need to remember, all right, with respect to the printf. Moving forward, so guys, I can also format that. So if I give percentage WD, so you all know that. So W in the sense, it specifies the width of the column. That's what you need to remember. So that's what you need to understand. So th that will help me to format my output is what you need to remember. So guys, the same way. So please understand the output of a real number will be displayed in a decimal notation using the following format. If I want to display the output of a real number, especially when it comes to the float. So please understand how do I do that? So with the help of this format. So percentage W in the sense width of a column and then dot P. All right. So that's what you need to remember. So P and then followed by F. So that's what you need to remember. So what is the meaning of P here, sir? We did not understood the meaning of P. Yes, we understood F in the sense it specifies the real number that is float. But P in the sense how many numbers that I have to display after the full stop. That is what I will call it as a floating point. Right. So how many numbers that I have to display? So that's what you will be specifying with respect to the P is what you need to remember at this point of time. Right. So moving forward, you can also specify with the exponential, not only for real number, you can also represent the exponential number by just representing E is also you need to remember. So that's what you just have to remember here with respect to this concept. Moving forward, guys, how do I print a single character? It's very simple. So guys, you will be just using the percentage WC. So WC in the sense, obviously W is a you know, width. If you want to specify width, you can specify. Otherwise you can, that's a you know, exceptional case now. You can avoid uh, using the W. So, but if you are specifying the W, so W will give you the width of the column is what you need to remember. C represents the character. That's what you need to understand here. Suppose if I want to, give uh, left justify. I want to justify the value whatever I'm printing to the left. So you just have to use the minus sign is what you need to remember before W. This is very important. If I want to, by default, it'll, it'll be like, you know, right justify. Suppose if you want to make it as a left justify before W, you just have to give minus symbol is what you need to remember at this point of time with respect to the single character. I repeat, to all of you, please listen to me carefully. I'm speaking with respect to how do I print a single character. If I want to print a single character, obviously I will be using percentage C, but I need to specify the width. So that at that time I will be using the percentage WC, right? That's all you need to remember. But here I just need to align my content. So if I want to align it to the left, so I will be specifying the minus before W is what you need to remember. Suppose if I don't specify minus, so obviously it will be right justified is what you need to remember. Now I have spoken about the single character. How do I print the string? So obviously I will be using the WPS. Okay, W.PS is what you need to remember to print a string is what you need to understand. You all know what is W and P is the first character of the string and yes, represents string is what you need to remember at this point of time. By saying this, guys, I've come to an end of this topic. So hope you liked it and I've kept it very simple and very easy for all of you to understand this topic. By saying this, take care. Bye-bye.